In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the features of Flexplot and GlynnMod to hopefully help you get started. This is all available currently in both R and Jamovi, but in this video, I'm just gonna show the Jamovi version. So I have opened a data set called Graduate Income. See the link in the description for the data set. And oftentimes what uh, Jamovi will do is it will default to like the variable years is how many years since they graduated. And any variable with less than 20 levels, Jamovi will default to treating it as a nominal variable. So you have to modify that. So you just be careful as you open up a data set. So I'm gonna go to setup and then change it to a continuous variable. And now we are ready to do some analyses. So we're gonna to go to GlynnMod. Uh, your version may say Flexplot or GlynnMod, one of the two, uh, yet to be determined. So I'm gonna go under here and click on Flexplot. And then just to show you some of the features, let's go ahead and look at years. And notice that if you just put in an outcome variable, it will look at a histogram. Or if I wanted to look at GPA instead, it will show you the distribution of GPA. And income, we'll show you the distribution of income. And also it works for categorical variables, except it will show a bar chart instead. And I will show profession. And one of the rules that uh, Flexplot follows is it will sort the um, categories by size. Um, that way you're encoding both the amount as well as the different groups in one plot. Um, Let's say you have some unorder or some ordered factor, then um, and you tell Jamovi that it is an ordered factor, then it will maintain that order. So let's go ahead and show you just a simple regression. Oh, not years. We want to put income as our outcome variable, and then let's say we want to look at how much people make as a function of their GPA, and so just a basic scatter plot, and that's all you have to do. And you can add or remove the confidence interval. Um, ghost line isn't relevant yet. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, neither is residualized predictor variable, but you can change the line from a lowest to a regression line. And um, I always, it defaults to lowest lines just because it's easy to trick your eye into believing that there are no bends in the data when there actually are. So that's why it defaults to a lowest line. Uh, median and quartiles, that's not relevant until we get into a categorical variable. And then transparency of dots, you could change it to 90% transparency, or you could do 10% or anything between zero and one. So that's what you would do for a scatter plot. Now let's say you wanted to look at kind of like a, a visual that would match an ANOVA. So let's say we're looking at different professions. I'm gonna move that out for a minute. And so notice that Flexplot in the background has decided for you the appropriate graphic to display, which is the beauty and the wonder and the awesomeness of Flexplot, as it makes the decisions for you so you can spend all your intellectual energy interpreting the graphic. And so just like it did with the bar charts, it will sort the x-axis, um, this time by order of mean or median, I don't remember which, and give you a quick visual. So by default, it shows the means and the quartile or the medians and the quartiles. You could instead choose to look at the mean and the standard errors, or you could look at the mean and standard deviation. I default to median, just again, for the same reason why I default to the lowest line, because um, it's easy to trick yourself into believing that something is symmetrical. And if it's not, then a median and the inner quartile range will help highlight that for you. And as before, we can change transparency of dots, but if we go to 90%, things get a little messy. So that's why I give you the flexibility to modify that yourself. And let's see, yeah, confidence bands isn't relevant here, neither are these. Okay, so that would be like an ANOVA. Now let's say you wanted to do a multiple regression. So let's say we want to look at years and GPA. Now you have two options. You could either put years as a predictor variable, in which case it's going to divide it into four and then put it all on the same graph. But that becomes really messy. So that's where the panel variables come in. And the lines look approximately straight. I, I mean, I see bendiness here, but usually that's pulled by an outlier. So I'm going to go ahead and look at a regression line instead. 
And then I'm going to get rid of the confidence bands for now, especially since I have the raw data anyway. And you'll notice this light gray line here. That's what I call a ghost line. And you'll notice that it overlaps perfectly with the first one. And so what it's doing is it is creating a line on each of these panels that is identical to the line here. And that makes it easier to compare across panels. So you can see that the relationship between GPA and income is steeper for those who are um, who have who graduated between eight and fourteen years ago, for example. Um, and you could of course get rid of the ghost line and just look at the graph. But anytime I do paneling, I really like to do ghost lines because it makes it a lot easier to compare things across panels. Another cool thing that this has is this option which is to residualize the predictor variable so the reason why this might be important is let's say that you want to look at the relationship between how let's say you want to look at the relationship between uh, income and how long ago they graduated uh, and you know that people with higher GPAs are gonna, probably gonna make more money and you don't care about that so you want to control for that or you want to residualize the effect of GPA on income. Well, that's what this part is for. What this will do is it will create what's called an added variable plot-ish with some modifications. And so what this has on the y-axis it, it is, is it is income after we have removed the effects of GPA. That's what that uh, pipe means there, income given GPA. And normally what you would do is if you were to residualize uh, the effect of GPA on income, this would be centered at zero, but I have just added the mean back in just to make it a little more intuitive to interpret. And so what you are seeing here is the relationship between e years and income after we have removed the effect of GPA. And like before, we could look at a lowest line instead um, or a regression line. We're going to stick with a regression line for now. So I think that is a really cool feature, especially when you're dealing mul with multivariate data that it becomes very tricky when you are looking at multiple panels. And actually, let me give you another example. We could add a second paneled variable, profession. And what that is going to do is it's going to create column panels for years and row panels for profession. Unfortunately, the text is cut off, but um, that's okay. We can still see what's going on here. And so it's basically going to fit a regression line within each of this, these strata, strata, whatever. So for those who graduated within five years and are clinical psychologists, this is a relationship between their GPA and their income. And these can be hard to interpret uh, because there's so much going on here. But um, what I like to do is first add the ghost line and it will kind of at random choose which one it's going to do and it looks like it's choosing those who graduated within five years who have an other profession and so what I like to do with these sort of panels is I look for parallel lines if there are parallel lines or approximately parallel lines that tells you that there are probably no interaction effects going on and so in this case uh, everything looks to be about parallel I mean there's some crossing going on but I would interpret that as noise, so it looks like it's a main effects model. And so in which case we can start looking at residualizing the predictor variable. And I'm let's say the real variable of interest is profession. We want to see what professions make uh, the most money um, after we control for how long ago they graduated and what their GPA was. We can residualize the predictor variable and move. Actually, it's already doing that. Um, Oh, that's cool. My function did something that I didn't expect it to. It already residualized uh, based on that. I thought you'd have to move it over here. But anyway, so this is showing you, uh, let's go ahead and reduce the transparency. This is showing that after we control for GPA in years, the highest paid profession is a clinical psychologist followed by a professor, then other, then social worker. So those are two of the coolest features, I think, of FlexPlot, our ghost line and residualizing. Uh, let's see what else we can show you here. We could also do a factorial ANOVA. Let me go ahead and use a different data set because uh, our two factors here, grad school and profession, 
um, like clinical and professor, you have to have gone to graduate school. So that's kind of less interesting. Let's go ahead and go to the exercise data data set. So let me make this bigger. I am going to go under flex plot. And then let's say we want to look at the weight loss as a function of both gender and the type of therapy that was administered to these people. So um, this shows you kind of like a factorial ANOVA. You would interpret this how you would um, those interaction plots. You're just looking for parallel lines. And this gets a little messy, particularly with the data in there. Um, so what we can do is instead of putting it in the same, we could panel it. So we could decide to put therapy type in the panels, or we could do it the other way around where we put gender in the panels. It depends on what your uh, theoretical interest is in. And so you'll notice that as before, we have asked for a ghost line. And so it is showing the pattern of the ghost line for the females. So it looks like relative to the females, the males have less weight loss across the board. And we could also residualize the predictor if we wanted. And we see that females are slightly higher than males. But anyway, um, so th that's two ways you could do a factorial ANOVA. You could visualize it in two different panels or you could put them in the same panel. Either way, um, it doesn't matter. One thing that I would recommend is um, if you look at it one way, be sure to look at it another way. Anytime that you can look at a plot more than one way, be sure to look at it from multiple angles because different angles will give you different insights. So before we concluded that females lost more weight than the males, whereas now, um, I mean, we could glean that because all those slopes are negative, meaning that the males are lower than the females. But we could also look at the different conditions here. And let's see, if we look at the ghost line, it looks like the both the behaviorist and the cognitive group are higher than the control. Now let's go ahead and flip that around again and see what we can conclude from this graph. Okay, so it looks like behaviorist and cognitive are about the same across the board. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing behaviorist therapy or cognitive therapy people seem to lose weight. By the way, this is simulated data, so this means absolutely nothing, but that's okay. So that is a factorial ANOVA. I already showed you an ANCOVA, which uh, we showed with the residualizing the predictor variable, showed you a multiple regression, showed you a t-test, showed you ANOVA, showed you a regression. And the cool thing about FlexPlot is it is all formula-based, um, and you get to choose whether they are a predictor variable or whether they are paneled. Um, so that's FlexPlot. I'll go ahead and show you GlynMod real quick, or the general linear model. So the philosophy behind this is, um, this is kind of a um, trying to shy away from significance testing and having people with their eye immediately go to a p-value and instead focus on the estimates and the graphics. And so here what you will do is you will specify an outcome variable. Let's say, again, we want to look at weight loss and we want to look at therapy type, but we also want to control for, let's say, motivation. And whether it comes first or second, it doesn't matter because all the estimates are conditional and all the other estimates. Um, you can choose to add diagnos diagnostic plots in here. And so it's gonna give you a histogram of the residuals, a residual dependence plot, and an SL plot. And it's also gonna give you an analysis plot. So the Plots in GlynMod are a lot more limited, so um, if you want to do some heavy plotting, I would definitely go to FlexPlot. And then it's gonna give you some estimates. So for the factorial, factorial, factor variable, the factors, um, it tells you the different levels and the estimates and the confidence intervals. So it looks like the estimate for, or the mean for the control group is 4.09. The mean weight loss for the behaviorist group is 7.8, and the mean weight loss for the cognitive group is 7.8. And then for the numeric variable, in this case, motivation, we have the intercept and the slope. Again, these are conditional on um, therapy type. So after controlling for therapy type, this is the relationship between motivation and weight loss. 
And then we also have the differences between the factors. So we have difference between behaviorist and control for a difference of 3.73 pounds. So you're going to lose 3.73 more pounds in the behaviorist group than if you were put in the control group. And we have cognitive versus the control, and they're very, very similar again, behaviorist and cognitive, which matches what we saw in FlexPlot, which is exactly what should happen. We also got the confidence intervals, and then we have Cohen's D estimates right here. So 0.74, that's considered a pretty close to a strong effect. And then we have R squared and semi-partial R squared estimates. So this is the proportion of variance explained in the entire model using both therapy type and motivation. And then these are the semi-partial, one for therapy type and one for motivation. So that is a quick introduction to the FlexPlot module. Please let me know if you have any questions in the description. Likewise, if you come across any bugs, I am a very active developer and I am happy to fix anything that is not working and so just let me know in the comments thanks